Hello, I'm Tony Candela, author of Automotive Wiring and Electrical Systems. You may have seen this book at your local Barnes & Noble. Um, you may own a copy of it. Um, or you may have considered purchasing it from outlets like Amazon.com, JEGS, Summit, Mobile Solutions, and any number of online automotive book resellers. This book has actually become a very good seller. And today, I'm going to give you a couple of tips that appear in the book, and you'll be able to learn more about everything I show you um, in the book. This is actually probably the most difficult thing for most car enthusiasts to understand. And what I have in my hand here is just a standard SPDT relay. It has five electrical terminals and it's very compact. It is capable of switching 30 amps continuously and most guys just have no idea how to make this thing work for them. Um, basically what a relay is is an electromagnetic switch. So in order to understand how to use a relay and put it to work for you it's first important to understand how the switch works. So let's put this away for right now. And what I have here, everyone should recognize. This is a standard Decora two position on off light switch. You turn the light on or you turn the light off. That's it, nothing else. Um, every home is outfitted with a number of these. This is what's called a single pole single throw switch, which means it has a single pole and the switch can be thrown either on or off. That's it. Uh, no other connections available. So either on or off. Um, SPST switches, as they're commonly known as, um, are easily identified by the fact that they have two electrical terminals, as does this switch. Now since we don't use a lot of those in cars, um, this would be something you might see for automotive use. This is an SPST rocker switch. Again, its function is identical to the Decora home light switch. Um, it has two positions, either on or off. Um, and when we say on or off, what we mean is when the switch is thrown one direction, these two terminals are electrically connected. And when the switch, switch is thrown the other direction, these two terminals are not connected. That's important to understand. Other types of SPST switches may be like this momentary switch commonly available at your local Radio Shack. Um, this switch also has two positions, but to activate it, one simply presses the button and holds it as long as desired. Um, this could be used to activate a nitrous oxide system um, or any number of other things. Um, again, two terminals with the switch in this position, they're not connected with the switch depressed, they are connected. Very simple. Now what I have here behind me is a trainer that has a number of different types of switches already installed on it. So let's show you what they do. Okay, so on this trainer we have a number of accessories. I have four lights. I have a couple of electric fans, small ones. Um, I've also got a number of different types of switches across the top. Each of the switches is conveniently wired from the back of the switch up here right down to this bus bar to make connecting them quite simple. Now as it stands each of the lights on the trainer have two connections. Um, one side goes to ground, the other side goes to power, the light comes on. And when I turn the power supply on I've got power connected from this fuse here to one side of the light, the other side of the light's grounded, so the light comes on. Now obviously, um, with the power connected, we need a way to turn accessories on and off without turning the power off. So the way to do that is to use a switch. So what we're going to do is disconnect the actual light from the source of power, and we're going to connect a switch in series with it. And we're going to use a standard SPST single pole single throw switch this one right here and you can see there are two terminals when the switch is in this position the switches those terminals are not connected 
and we throw the switch the light comes on because those terminals are now connected. Um, very simple. Now if we want something that gives us maybe some visual feedback, um, we could always use a lighted version of the same kind of switch. Now before we connect it, let's look at it. Instead of having two terminals like the traditional SPST, it has three. Now the two terminals on the right are the switch and the one on the left is just a ground connection so when we throw the switch the light on the switch comes on. So let's connect it. Uh, let's go this guy here and then this guy here. And now we need to ground the switch and we'll do that here. So now throwing on the switch, number one turns on the light, but secondly gives us some visual feedback that the accessory, in this case the light, is on. So that's that simple. Both of these are the same kind of switch. They work the same way. One has an illumination, the other one does not. Um, now the switch to the right of the lighted SPST is an SPDT switch and that switch also has three electrical connections. Now those differ from either of these two switches. Basically what you've got is the center connection is the common and then the, either of the outsides would be normally open or normally closed depending on how the switch is configured. So let's wire it up. So its input again is yellow and then let's connect one of these lights to one side of the switch and then we'll connect the other side of the switch to another light. Now if we throw the switch one way one light is on, throw the switch the other, the other light comes on. Now notice when one light goes on the other goes off so this is an SPDT switch. You can see its function differs greatly from either of the first two switches. Now the next switch in series is also an SPDT switch. It is just a momentary type. So pressing the switch once and then once again switches between the normally open and normally closed connectors on that. It performs, it functions the same exact way as the SPDT toggle. Now I'll show you something that many vehicles have used for many, many years. Um, and this is, the next switch is an SPDT center off. We're going to use that in this demonstration. Now you notice this switch also has three electrical terminals, but the switch has three unique positions. A center position, and then a switch to the left, or a switch to the right. So this would be similar to how the turn signals in most vehicles work. Okay, so we're going to connect up the turn signal circuit like it would be in most any car on the road. And to do so, we're going to actually install a flasher, which is this guy right here. And we're going to put that in series with the power input of the switch. That way we can use one flasher for both left and right turn signals. Instantly, this is exactly what the factories do. So we're going to connect the power input of the flasher to our fuse block and we'll connect the power output of the flasher to the center terminal of the switch which is this guy right here and then we're going to connect one side of the switch to the two lights on the left and we'll connect the other side of the switch to the two lights on the right. I have to deviate and use a yellow jumper. Now when we turn the switch one direction we've got the right lights flashing just like your turn signals would. Center off, go to the other position, 
and we've got half of the lights flashing. Now we have both of them flashing. This is just like your factory turn signal circuit is wired. So it's just that simple. Um, so that's an SPDT center off, which means you've got a common, the pole in the middle, um, and you've got two normally opens. They're typically labeled off, on, and on. Okay? So then the last switch we're going to show you is just simply a momentary switch. And this is probably the simplest of all switches. So let's make a few changes here. And we'll connect the output of that to the two lights on the left and the input to the switch. Press the button and the lights come on. It's just that simple. That's our SPST momentary switch. Lights stay on as long as I hold the switch in. Now, which of these switches is the typical relay more like? Well, as you'll see on the right here, we have a number of different styles of relays. So, you're going to learn all about each of them in the next video. Now, each of the things I just showed you in regards to switches are outlined in their entirety in even more depth. Um, and that's in chapter 4, uh, beginning on page 62. So that takes you through all the different types of switches, including ones I didn't cover here. And then from there, we're actually going to learn about relays, which is the next thing in the chapter. Until next time, I'm Tony, and I'm out.